I walk the field before anyone shows up and I pray over the field. And I just feel like what that does is that I'm praying for an atmosphere of Christ, that, that, that hearts are softened to understand that Christ is real. It's game day at West Virginia University and a busy day for Josh Sonoga. Josh serves as chaplain for many of the men's teams at WVU. And while football may be the big draw, it's a soccer game that was his first stop of the day. Pray tonight that we can come and play together. Josh serves WVU student athletes and coaches through Fellowship of Christian Athletes, or FCA. Our mission is to represent Jesus Christ, is, is to present to athletes and coaches and all whom they influence the challenge and adventure of receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So we just do that by being available. We go to practices, we go to uh, games, we go to wherever, and, and it's all up to the coaches. One coach Josh supports is Marlon LeBlanc, who heads up WVU's men's soccer team. With coach, I actually do a one-on-one -on -one mentoring thing that we've been doing ever since he's been here. We meet together once a week and we go to Starbucks and just get in the word together. I notice I can be a little bit more on edge when I miss those opportunities to meet with Josh once a week. Whether it's just uh, feeling a little bit of a stranglehold or burning the candle from both ends, as they like to say. You know, that influence kind of levels me and keeps me grounded, which is great. Under LeBlanc's leadership, WVU soccer has reached new heights. They're consistently in the national rankings and have made several NCAA tournament runs. But LeBlanc's coaching goes far beyond just the X's and O's. Right from the beginning of preseason, we'll sit down with our entire group and you know we'll go through a whole presentation. And it's not tactically based, it's not technical stuff. It's, it's not even, to be quite honest with you, a whole lot about soccer per se. It's a little bit more about life. It's a little bit more about expectations. It's a little bit more about responsibility. I bring these guys into my home and around my two young children. And so it's a big thing for me if I'm gonna bring these these guys, these 28, 30 players into my home and have them around my kids and have my kids look up to them and spend time with them and jump on their backs and, and everything else that they've got to be, you know, they've got to be a family. At the end of the day, I'm judged on whether we win or lose. Um, but I do believe that there is a right and a wrong way to kind of get there. Um, and so for me, it's about being able to go home and look myself in the mirror at the end of the day, um, that I've done the best I can for them on the whole. The foundation of LeBlanc's leadership is rooted in his faith. I spend a lot of time just kind of praying about how I'm going to interact and how I'm going to coach my guys on a day. And it's a daily prayer for me. It's just lead me in the way that I coach these guys and how I work with these guys. In a lot of ways, one of those things where it's a fine line where you got to be careful that you don't put a lot of pressure on them to make them feel a certain way or make them feel uncomfortable, but you also want to want them to, to see see Christ through you. And in the big moments, Coach LeBlanc finds guidance in God's Word. Matthew 6, 25, the cure for anxiety. Um, this is why I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? And so game management and big game and pressure and the ability to kind of reflect back to little scriptures or little things that are um, kind of put things in perspective. And the opportunity to work with Josh's chaplain adds an extra dimension to the team. The guys get to see someone who's invested in them and with it, not getting anything out of it. You know, I'm their coach, I want them to win, um, but I'm also paid to be their coach. And you get trainers that are there that are paid to be their trainers. And um, Josh has no reason to be there except for them. Um, and I think the guys really appreciate that and they see that and they see him as an outlet of someone that they can talk to and kind of open up to. A lot of times for me it's their senior year where they see, hey, you've been consistent all four years. I've never even talked to you, but you've always been nice to me. You've always, you know, helped us when we needed help. And what is it about you? You know, what is it about what you have? An important resource in a changing culture. I remember when everybody used to walk around with what would Jesus do? wristbands and it was easy to be a Christian and then you look around today and you see how hard it is um, you see people of Christian faith being almost uh, marginalized and shut down you look at guys like Tim Tebow who gets on television and talks about Christ being a savior and gets told to shut up and gets pushed to the side which makes Josh's role as a chaplain that much more important
Josh ends his day at the football stadium. A nationally broadcast game is just another opportunity to make a difference. They are role models. I don't care if they say they are or not. These athletes and these coaches are role models. And if we could help them be good dads, good husbands, help them understand who Jesus Christ is in their life and they give their life to the Lord, they can influence so many others.